All right, let's look at the instruction format. These are the double operand instructions. And what you see here, again, this is the Wikipedia page, um, is, the, uh, is the layout, the word layout. Now, the word is two bytes. The bits are numbered from right to left. Uh, so we start off at bit 0 on the rightmost end and bit 15 on the left. Bit 15 tells us whether it's a byte instruction or a word instruction. All right, so for example, here, if there's a 1 in that column, it's a byte, move byte, okay? Compare byte, um, bit test byte, and so forth. So if the first column here is a 1, uh, it means it's a byte instruction. If it's a 0, it means it's a uh, word instruction. The operands are words. Now, in the way this is note and noted here, these are all um, octal digits, okay? This is in octal, although nothing here is actually greater than 7. Uh, there is no 7, as a matter of fact. Um, this is an octal digit. The second digit is an octal digit. It stands for three bits. It stands for the three bits between 12, 13, and 14. Bit 50. The problem with octal, of course, is that there are an uneven number of octal digits in a 16-bit word. That being the case, the extra bit is this high-order bit, this byte versus word bit that you see down the side down the side here. This is actually just one bit. Uh, the second digit is actually three bits. It refers to the opcode. And these are the opcodes for the double operand instructions. Now, the double operand instructions have, of course, two operands. There's a sourced operand and there's a destination operand. Now, each operand is not only a register, but it's also a mode. So we looked at the modes before, and there's, uh, the modes can range from 0 to 7. Um, depending on what the mode is, we interpret the register. In some of the modes, there will be an additional 16-bit. A couple of the modes is going to be an additional 16 bits after the instruction, an additional word. So in a um, worst-case situation, we could have two bytes for the actual instruction plus two more bytes for, the, for a word associated with the uh, source operand and two more bytes associated um, with the destination operand. So the entire instruction could be uh, up to six bytes long, in the, the entire instruction and all of its parts. So you have to keep that in mind. But anyway, we're not going to go back and talk. We'll t look at the modes. Um, you already did that. All right, so when we come down here, it's relatively straightforward. So um, move is just uh, moves a byte from the source to the destination. The source um, word or byte is moved to the destination. Uh, the compare, of course, you compare uh, two bytes or two words, and it sets the flags. Those are the flags in the um, processor status word to indicate the result of the comparison. Bit test is used to uh, test bits in a, in a byte or word, uh, to clear bits, um, to set bits, and then we've got add and subtract. Um, in the case of the of the add, the destination is um, the, the value in the destination. The, the source is summed into the destination, and the result remains in the destination. All right. So whatever the source operand is, however you computed it, um, it is added to the destination, and it stays at the destination. Of course, the destination could be in a register or it could be out in memory, depending upon the mode. Of course. All right. Um, the, it mentions down here the add and subtract instructions uh, are only word addressing. There is no byte version of them. As a result, the 0 and the 1 here is merely to distinguish between add and subtract. It does not mean um, that it's a, bit, um, a byte versus a word instruction. Add and subtract are always uh, word instructions. Now, if we look at the double operand instruction uh, opcodes, we see there's some missing. There's none with a 0 in this column, and there's none with a 7 in this column. Uh, they're used for other instructions. Uh, also, the first, well, the first group of them here is the um, is, is uh, extended instructions. These were, in many cases, uh, several cases, added to later versions of the system. But in these instructions, first of all, yeah, this is always, the first bit is always a 0. Um, there are no; these are not byte um, versus word instructions. They're all word instructions. Um, bits 12, 13, and 14 are always one. There's your seven, and then the opcode is in bits nine through 11. 
Now, 9 for, through 11 up here were the mode uh, with, uh, bits um, for the source operand. But you see down here in these instructions, you see they kind of faked it a bit, um, these um, three bits become the opcode. And the the what was the source um, register, which still can be, but um, is in uh, is there, but it's only a register. It's never in memory. It's in, never any of the funny addressing modes. It's just the contents of a register. Uh, all right, and so that means we've got seven possible opcodes, and we go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, they used them all. Um, these are multiply, divide, shift, uh, double shift, exclusive or. Uh, the header into a bunch of uh, floating point instructions and system instructions. These again were add-ons, but uh, these are escapes into another set of instructions. And uh, subtract one in branch. Uh, it's a looping instruction. Um, so what what happens here is we let's look at the multiply. Um, we've got the the source the source on the multiply. You see, it's a source or a destination. It depends on the instruction. Um, the source on the multiply is the is a is a standard one. It's a mode plus a register. So it means this. Um, it can be the contents of a register. It can be um, uh, someplace in memory. Uh, you know, it's, it, where uh, anything you can address with a mode register combination. Um, that's the source. And what we do is we multiply the contents of the register specified in bits six through eight times the source. But when you multiply, things get bigger. The result goes into the register plus the next register. So if this is register 2, uh, the result will be register 2 and register 3. So it's, uh, the, the result is can be two registers full of data. Uh, but it mentions here register uh, may be odd, but if it is, the high order 16 bits of the result are not stored. So if you know that the result is going to fit into 16 bits from a multiply, you can give this as an odd register, and you will the answer will be in the odd register. There will be nothing stored in the next uh, in the even register above it. Uh, the IBM 360 series also had even odd register pairs for doing uh, same thing for uh, multiply, divide, and for shift. Um, the divide is somewhat similar. Um, we won't go into the details of these instructions, but uh, you can figure them out, multiply. The early version of the machine did not have multiply and divide. A lot of early um, basic machines don't have multiply and divide because they're fairly expensive instructions to, um, uh, to execute. But anyway, these are the instructions for which the uh, bits 12 through 13 are ones, and bit 15 is always a zero. Uh, so they're extended instructions. Now we come to the one operand instructions. And in the basic format, um, first of all, the bit here at the beginning, bit 15, uh, that will determine whether or not, it, as appropriate, it's a byte instruction or a word instruction. Some are not either byte or word. Uh, for example, jump to a subroutine it doesn't, doesn't um, qualify as byte or word. Uh, but in others, um, like clear, clear word or clear byte, um, the one or the zero does determine which way it works. Now, these only have one operand, and that operand is specified as a register, three bits, a mode, also three bits. And where we used to have in the two operand instructions, uh, bits 6 through 11 would be a register and a mode um, for the other operand. Instead, we have an opcode. Well, we have 6 through 10 is an opcode. Bit 11 is always a 1. And the high order bits here are 0. And they account for... Um, the missing uh, bits from the uh, from from the two operand instructions above. This is the zero situation. The previous ones here were the seven situation. These are the zero situation. So we have a bunch of um, in. You know, so we've got bit six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. That's five bits. We can have up to thirty-two um, different opcodes. I don't know if they use all thirty-two. They might. It looks like they use quite a few. Uh, anyway, depends on the opcodes to what's going to exactly happen. Um, some of them are now a couple of he these here are um, are a little bit uh, a little bit different, but anyway, the swap bytes, jump to subroutine, emulator trap, which basically is used to request an operating system service. It creates basically an interrupt, clear, clear byte, complement, complement byte, increment, increment byte, decrement, decrement byte, negate, negate byte, uh, add carry, add the carry bit into a value, either a byte or a word. 
Uh, that's for extended precision. If you're going to have this machine, of course, is built for 16-bit numbers. But what if you want 32-bit numbers? Well, you basically do two 16-bit adds, but you have to add the carry from the first add into the second add, so the result would be correct. Likewise, if we get a subtract with carry or subtract carry uh, test, it just loads a, loads a, a byte or word and sets the uh, flags appropriately. Rotate right, rotate left, shift right, shift left, uh, these are arithmetic shifts. Um, return from subroutine, uh, move to processor status. This would be an operating system type of command. Um, instruction and D space. These are, again, more operating system oriented. Extend sign. Um, the sign bit is the end flag is um, 16 copies of it are placed in the destination. Uh, this, again, would be related to multiple uh, precision arithmetic. Um, and move uh, from status um, destination gets the contents of the uh, processor status word. So there's a lot of instructions in there, and they um, basically all, I guess they all do correspond to that, um, um, to this pattern up here. There's this single uh, operand instructions. So reviewing the single operating instructions, we had this sort of modified double operand instruction here where one operand is the mode and register. The other one's always just plain register. And these were extended instructions. They were not in the original instruction set, nor on some of the uh, more limited machines. Uh, they, these also provide a gateway for floating point instructions, which were added. The original machine came out in the late 60s, uh, and I don't remember what exactly what year, but uh, they extended it. They uh, made some pretty large PDB-11s over the years with very large amounts of memory. And uh, uh, But basically, the whole architecture was underneath it, a 16-bit architecture. And then we've got the uh, double operand instructions, of which there are not terribly many, uh, but uh, there they are.